Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn about a new topic in Chapter 2 Atomic Structure called Electronic Configurations. We now have understand how the locations of an electron be assigned. Now we will use the knowledge on quantum numbers we have learned in 2.2 to determine the electron's arrangement in an atom which we call it as electronic configurations. We are going to use all three rules in determining the electron configurations of an atom. They are off bow principle, Pauli's exclusions principle, and last one is Hans rule. Before we apply the rules, we need to first know how this electron's arrangement looks like. There are two representations of electron's arrangement. First, it can be in SPDF notations, also known as electronic configurations. This SPDF comes from the name of orbital in previous chapter. So these notations basically consist of sequence of orbital together with the number of electrons occupied. For example, we have oxygen atom with eight electrons means we're going to first list out all the subshell present to accommodate these eight electrons. You can do this by checking shell and subshell present. So we have n equal to 1, l equal to 0, means we have 1 s which can accommodate two electrons out of the eight electrons. We are now left with only six electrons. Next, we have n equal to 2, L equal to 0 and 1 means we have 2s and 2p orbital. 2s orbital can fill in 2 electrons. The remaining 4 electrons will go to 2p orbital. So the blue color represent energy level n, the black color represent the orbital or the subshell, and the red color represent the total number of electrons in an orbital. Second representations of electron arrangement is orbital diagram. This diagram consists of box or lines indicates each orbital in an energy level diagram. If the SPDF notation tells you number of electrons in terms of superscript, for this diagram, we'll be using arrow instead. Using the same example of oxygen, we'll start drawing the diagram with box or line indicate an orbital like this. If there are more than one orbital present in the subshell, for example, this 2p, we know we have three 2p orbitals. Make sure the box is attached to one another or the line should be close to one another indicates degenerate orbital with equivalence energy. As for the number of electrons present in each orbital, they are basically the same as in SPDF notation, where we're going to first fill in the 1s orbital, and then 2s orbital, and the rest going to be 2p. And we're going to discuss thoroughly the three rules assigning the electrons to orbital after this. We are going to use all three rules in determining the electron configurations of an atom. The first rule is called Aftbow Principle. Aftbow principle tells us the order in which atom will fill up its orbital. This is determined by their relative energy. So based on our prior knowledge on quantum numbers, we are able to list all the subshell presence from the shell. We know when we have n equal to 1, our l gonna be 0. So this 0 indicates 1 as subshell. When n equal to 2, l gonna be 0 and 1. So this 0 and 1 indicates there are 2s and 2p orbital presence in n equal to 2. When n equal to 3, l gonna be 0, 1, and 2. This 0, 1, and 2 indicates there are 3s, 3p, and 3d orbitals. And the list goes on for the rest of the n. Now, in relation to what Afbao had proposed, orbitals that are further away from the nucleus have higher potential energy, and the energy increases diagonally. So we'll start with 1s, then 2s, and 2p, then only 3s. Then we have 3p, next is not 3d, but 4s. After 4s, then only we have 3d, and so forth. Every electron in an atom has a unique set of quantum numbers. No two electrons in an atom can have precisely the same four quantum numbers as stated by Pauli exclusion principle. This is because any orbital can only hold up to two electrons 
and even if they are in the same as an orbital, they will have opposite spin values. Let's say we use neutral sulfur atom with proton number of 16 as well as its electrons. Looking at the orbitals, each of which can hold up to two electrons, let's fill them up starting at the lowest energy here, climbing up to the higher energy. The 1s orbital gets two electrons, one spin up, one spin down. Then, 2s orbital also have two electrons, one up and one down. While for 2p, they can occupy up to six electrons in silicon atom, so means they're gonna have two opposing spin in an orbital like this. So this is what Paul is trying to say. Hans rule says that for electrons of the same energy, you need to put one electron in each orbital first before doubling them up. So we are now left with only six electrons at n equal to three. So two of them will first occupy 3s orbital because they are at lower energy level than 3p as suggested by Afbao and they must have opposing spin in an orbital as suggested by Pauli. For the remaining four electrons in here, we are going to fill them up in all three degenerate 3p orbitals by applying Hans rule. So one electron spin up in 3px one electron spin up in 3py and one electron spin up in 3pz. For the final electrons, we're going to pair them up with 3px orbital here. Just a reminder that px, py and pz are all equivalence energy in here like these. So, electrons can fill any orbitals of the same energy level, but by convention, we usually fill the px first. There you go, a total of 16 electrons in a sulfur atom. Now, let's check your comprehension. So the question asks for orbital diagram and electronic configurations for fluorine atom given to you the proton number is 9. Since it's just a neutral atom, means the number of electrons will be the same as in the proton. So, it is easier for you to first write the SPDF notations or the electronic configurations. So, we're going to have 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5 to accommodate all the 9 electrons in fluorine atom. As for orbital diagram, simply draw the box like this. And don't forget to label the name of orbital underneath. And if they are different orbital, make sure to leave some spaces in here indicates different potential energy. So there you go. In 1s orbital, we're going to fill in with 2 electrons, 2s orbital, 2 electrons. And if we're going to apply the rules here, 1s, then 2s, and 2p, we're going to follow the half bar principle. And in terms of opposing spin, we're going to follow the Pauli's exclusions principle. And lastly, for the rest of these five electrons, we're going to first fill them singly before pairing up. That's what we can see in here. So we're going to follow Hans rule. So all three rules are applied in this assignment of electrons in an atom. Just to recall, maximum number of electrons for each subshell will be the same despite their shell differs. So as for S subshell, we're going to have two electron maximum, P subshell, six electrons, D subshell, 10 electrons, and lastly, F subshell, 14 electrons. A reminder in writing the electronic configurations involving 3D orbital, 4S orbital should be filled before 3D orbitals. So let's take an example of titanium with Z equal to 22. Since it's just a neutral atom, means electrons will also have 22 electrons. So let's first write the SPDF notations. We're going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, then only 3d2. This is because according to Afbau, 4s has lower energy than that of 3d. So, please check that you're supposed to include 4s2 before filling in your 3d orbital. 
Apart from neutral atom, you also need to know how to write electronic configurations of monoatomic ions. So why do we have these ions? The purpose of forming ion is to achieve stability of noble gas configurations of Ns2 and P6. It can be 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and etc. If it is easier, in other words, less energy needed for an atom to achieve stability by removing electrons, means we're going to form positive charge. While if it's easier to gain electrons to achieve noble gas configurations, then we're going to form negative charge. If we look at this example, given neutral sodium atom with proton number equal to 11, we're going to first check its SPDF notation. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and 3s1. At the moment, your atom is less stable due to the highest energy level of 3 is not fully occupied. Suppose n equal to 3 should have a subshell of 3s, 3p, and 3d. Then only they will achieve stable configurations. So energy required to gain electron and completely fill n equal to 3 that comprise of 3p and 3d is much greater compared to energy required to remove only one electron from 3s orbital and achieve the noble gas configurations consists of only s and p which you can see from here we got 2s and 2p if we want to remove this 3s1 therefore for sodium atom we're going to choose removing one electron from 3s orbital to form the most stable ion of Na+, with configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And sometimes we can simply use these neon configurations as a short form. Another example, we have neutral fluorine atom with proton number of 9. So as for its SPDF notations, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5. To achieve noble gas configurations, we need to choose whether it is easier to remove all 7 electrons from this n equal to 2 or simply add another 1 electron to completely fill the n2 to become p6. So we could see it is much easier and less energy needed to add only one electron to the fluorine atom. Therefore, the most stable ion formed gonna be F- with electronic configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So whenever you have this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, you can simply make it into neon configurations. A reminder when forming cation means you want to remove electrons. If you have d orbitals in your electronic configurations, always remove s orbital from the outermost shell. Let's say you have your outermost shell of 4, then the d orbital which belongs to the inner shell. If you look here, the d orbital going to be, if you have 4 minus 1, they're going to be 3. So for example, we have manganese with proton number of 25 as well as its electrons. So the electronic configurations will be up to 3d5. So you look here, we have 3d5. Before 3d5, according to alpha, we're going to have 4s2. Note that in terms of energy, 4s has lower energy than that of 3d. But when forming cations, the stability is achieved by keeping the electron closest to the nucleus. In other words, by having less shell. So, the most stable ion of manganese will have configurations of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and 3d5 by removing the electron at the outermost shell of 4. Next, we're going to learn about the anomalous filling pattern. So this anomalous filling pattern happened to certain atom only due to unusual stability of completely filled 3D subshell. So for your syllabus, we'll be dealing with chromium and copper with proton number of 24 and 29. As for the first case where we have chromium with proton number of 24, if we arrange the electron according to all three rules we have discussed earlier, we're going to get this kind of configuration. 
1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and 3d4. So, according to Afbao, energy increases diagonally. That's why we have 4s before 3d. To see this more clearly, let's illustrate it using orbital diagram. So we could see that 3D orbital in here, which is located at the initial compared to 4S, has only partially filled orbital, which has lower stability compared to fully filled 4S orbital. So for this chromium, the configurations will be adjusted to actual configurations of 4S1, 3D5, due to the stability of half-filled 3D orbitals. So we could see, even though they are not completely filled, but at least all the electrons has been filled into this orbital diagram, means the initial is much stable compared to the one predicted by Afbao. For copper, with proton number of 29 in here, the case is pretty similar to chromium with a slight difference. We could see from the electronic configuration as well as orbital diagram predicted by Afbao, the 3D orbital which is located at the initial compared to 4S orbital has only partially filled orbital of 9 electrons which has lower stability compared to the fully filled 4S orbital. So for this copper, these configurations will be adjusted to actual configurations of 4s1 3d10 due to stability of completely filled 3d orbital that's all for subtopic 2.3 electronic configurations and this marks the end of this chapter 2 atomic structure thank you for your attention goodbye